All right. I don't I don't know if I'm ready, but I think I'm gonna have to be ready because I seen Man, I know I'm not ready. I, I, I see I seen some look, Jaeger. I look I'm gonna tell you now. I don't even know what happened. <laughs> I don't even know who I don't, I don't know names. Okay. okay, you know, okay, I'm gonna say this. This is another chapter in the book of WWE is gonna WWE. No, I don't want Hopefully, that. Roughly 10 minutes before we started to record, shout out to my bro Mike, hit me up and said, are you seeing what's happening right now? All in all, WWE just released 18 wrestlers in between NXT and the main roster. 18. 18. I'm going to, if y'all are ready, I'm going to start from the mid-level or the low level, not to disrespect anybody, and just work our way up. I guess I so. know. Yeah. yeah, I know. I know. So I know some of the high level because I've seen. Um, if you if you basically kind of saw a quick flash, you saw mm -hmm. the four big names. If yeah. You saw like a quick flash. Mm -hmm. So, to start off, kind of lower. Well, first I'm gonna go ahead and give one to Harry Smith, which. He didn't even get a chance to get back on TV yet. Hmm. So, Harry Smith, he's been released. Or the British Bulldog son, for the ones who don't know. Yeah, but which now, is crazy he, because he was, they, they kept rumoring that he was going to, yeah, yes. it doesn't matter. But we got Katrina Cortez, which a few weeks ago she wrestled Electra Lopez. We have Trey Baxter. Our core really? boyfriend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have Jeet Rama, who was just recently featured on NXT this Tuesday. Uh, he wrestled, um, I forgot who Jeet just wrestled uh, Tuesday. But yeah. That name sounds familiar, but yeah, I don't. I forgot. I'm trying to remember all the matches that happened Tuesday, but I think he was one of the matches Tuesday. He was one of the opponents. Um, we have Zeta Ramirez. Really? Well, I mean, yeah. that almost makes sense. We have Zeta Ramirez. Uh, Jesse Kamea. What? Wow. Yeah. Damn, Swerve must be pissed. Damn. Oh. There's more. Uh, now to start to move up. Former NXT tag champion, Oni Lorcan. Interesting. Uh, Lince Dorado. I'm not surprised at that one. Yeah. Uh, if we really want to drive a nail in the Robert Stone brand, Frankie Monet. Wow. 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 Fuck? wow. If we, if we want to get a true reunion of the Lucha House Party, Grand Metalik. Again, not surprised. I, I, well, look, when, when Kalisto got released, I was like, it's only a matter of time. I'm going to throw this name out because I really didn't care for her return. Eva Marie. Okay. That was almost expected because especially when they said that she was written off a of TV for a little bit, I was like, she probably got released. Now, you kind of mentioned Swerve, so let's kind of twist the knife a little bit. Be fat. Wow. Um. Now we're going to get into the wild categories from here on out. Wait, we were already at what? All right. No, 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 no. Mia Yim. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna. I'm. I'm not. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, <laughs> not because there, 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 there's a there. Yeah, never mind. Scoot. Scoot knows. Scoot knows. Uh, next on the list, Amber Moon. Ooh. Former NXT Women's Champion, 
former NXT Women's Tag Champion, Ember Moon. I will re put respect on her name. R.I.P. What the fuck? Uh, former WWE Women's Tag Champ and former Raw Women's Champ, Nia Jax. That's the name that I saw. Jaeger. Oh, no. Do not spaz out. Oh, no. Scarlet. Oh. But still, fuck. But, but, uh, what, you know what, you know what, Scoop? Now, now, now I'm saying that this, this is going to be fucked up then. Oh, former, oh. former. Oh. He had NXT, to come for me. You see this? Former <laughs> NXT North American champ and former NXT champion, Keith Lee. That's the other name I saw. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure you're about to say the other name that and I saw. The last name, former NXT, well, two time NXT champion, Karrion Cross. Yeah. So they basically, and this is where the fucked up part, they got rid of the couples. Two couples. Yeah. And then significant others of other people, one Jesse Kamea and then Frankie Monet. Mm -hmm. Um, Respectively, for you know, John Morrison and uh, Swerve. Yep. So, this is man, they yeah. really out some NXT talent. Yep. If, if this wasn't so shocking as far as like the names, I would say this whole thing was completely laughable yeah. because that's where that's where it's going now with all these releases. Because, no, oh, get down. And then, and this is this is what I hate because you have a lot of people who. Again, WWE stands for one, and then you have a lot of people who are under the WWE umbrella, wrestlers, of course, and they'll sit there and they'll cut for the company to the point where they'll sit here and they'll and they'll talk and they're like, you know what? Yeah, everything's fine here. You know, trust in the process. You know, we're going somewhere with this, and then you get shit where they get axed. I'm primarily talking about Heath Lee and Karrion Cross. Mm-hmm. These are two situations where people severely hated what they were doing to these guys' characters, and you had both of these guys in one way, shape, or form or another. They defended WWE. Yes. So, to me, that's a slap in the face to these guys because these guys were loyal to the company and didn't disparage the name of WWE, and you cut them. Now, Scoot, I don't know within any of this information if there was reasons behind it, because I'm pretty sure you're probably going to oh, say budget cut. There was. And you just said it. Mm. Budget cuts. Okay. Now, they so-called made record profits, and they got that crown jewel money, but they were all budget cuts. Now, so I can understand... Now, if you say budget cuts, and it, it, it made sense previously when they did the first round of these cuts, where it's like you had a lot of people under certain contracts because of how they were hiring people off the indies, mm -hmm. so that way they wouldn't get signed by you know said companies here and there. So a lot of people had these inflated contracts. That makes sense as budget cuts. But when you have this list here, and no disrespect to anybody that was cut, Jesse Kamea, B Fab, I'm sure you weren't paying these people loads of fucking money. Yes. On top of that, when they transition, when especially B Fab, you have her transition from NXT to the main roster. I'm pretty sure you have some type of contract negotiation where you revise what's going on because they clearly mm -hmm. have to go from a 30 day to a 90 day non compete clause within that contract, which means like B Fab's case mm -hmm. that now she's going to be on the 90 day because Frankie already went on her Twitter and was like, no, my name is Taya Vaccaro. Yeah. Uh, Scarlett went on her Twitter and was like, I'll see y'all in 30 days. Damn. So I guess the NXT people, of course, had the 30 day, but the main roster people, Keith, Carrion, most likely Mia, uh, Naya, they're going to be on uh, 90 day clauses, unfortunately. You know what I think that this is now, now that I think about it? I think they're getting rid of people, of course, saying budget cuts. 
And I think what they're what they're prepping for is contract negotiations for everybody that's planning on leaving, i.e. Kevin Owens, and trying to do what they can to inflate these guys' contracts because they know who they want to keep around. Well, I also threw out a little filler too, because I was when I was talking to Ashley about it. Do you think they're going to try to make a play for some of the Ring of Honor people. I could see that. That could be the case. Hmm. That would make sense. Because either that or they're really trying to garner some free money for Something. that library. Something. If AEW doesn't already have that, that video library. So yeah, it hasn't so, came out yet of who purchased it, if anybody got it yet. Okay. But yeah, like I'm I mean, here it is. You didn't reintroduce Keith Lee as Keith Bearcat Lee. And I don't know if y'all watched the match. Well, I know Jaeger hadn't, but I don't know if you watched the match with him with the nickname Bearcat. Mm-hmm. They say that shit so much that they wanted that shit hammered in your brain that his name is Keith Bearcat Lee. Like, they said his name so much that, honestly, if it was a drinking game, you'd have been drunk as fuck. <laughs> you know... Drunk as fuck. Because here, they here. said Keith Bearcat Lee so many times, you would be just done. It's th- it, it, this, this is a funny thing about it, because I know, I know I made a joke on tag me in about Eric Bischoff being like that, that plush doll or plush whatever with the, mm-hmm. with the speaking box that's on repeat. <laughs> yeah. This, this is almost akin to like that, that one boyfriend who has that girlfriend that he berates and just treats badly and just says, you're not going to be shit without me. It's like, yeah, you can go and then just batters her to the point to where, and not I don't mean physically, I just mean like emotionally and mentally, batters her to the point to where she truly doesn't think that she's anything on the market, where her stock is just completely low. And then she gets out there and then she realizes there's nothing out there for her because home is where the heat is, for lack of a better term. Yeah. But the crazy thing about it is that you have guys that's been done to this like, Miro, Malachi Black, who mm-hmm. was treated poorly, and you would think that, well, nobody wants these guys. And you and I say Rusev and slash Miro in this instance because anybody who saw Rusev and the way that he was done wrong with Rusev Day and everything and then goes off, you would never think that out of that you would get Miro. No. No. WWE, <clears throat> with these cuts – and I'm just saying primarily at the top here, Mia Yim, Keith Lee, Scarlett, Karrion Cross, hell, even Nia Jax. Maybe not so Nia Jax, unless she gets her shit together because... Don't win Taya. Taya. We'll say, yeah, we'll say Taya. With these, with, with, with these individuals, all you did was give them a reason to say FWWE and I'm going to show you that you should not have release me that's kind of what ashley said she kind of uttered that sentiment a little bit that um she kind of she kind of uttered a sentiment of is there basically this would kind of maybe spin off a little bit is the dream of going to wwe still there hell no like after all after this this year and last year with all these budget cuts Fuck WWE. I wouldn't want to work there. Yeah. yeah like, is that dream still there? Like, yeah, they're still considered number one, but is that dream still there of really wanting to go to WWE now? Because no, one, no. you might have to go through NXT, and as we're starting to see, you might not even make it out of NXT. So you were in the WWE system through a loophole. Yeah. Then if you make it out of NXT and uh if you make it out of NXT and go to the main roster, you get turned into Keith Bearcat Lee. Basically. Or you look like a 
or you look like uh how the average Joes was looking in on dodgeball when they got their outfits mixed up and they came around in dominatrix gear, you know. Yeah. I, when, every day I'm pretty sure Adam Cole is like, Thank God I didn't stay. <laughs> Which is funny because thinking about it, you got you have Keith Bearcat Lee, and you were going to put Adam Cole haircut name change with Bearcat Lee, and you just released Bearcat Lee. Does that mean that Adam Cole's future was pretty much written in stone? Yeah, they were going to see and, and it's crazy because they probably were going to destroy Adam Cole's look and appeal and everything mm -hmm. and then cut him to make him unappealing on mm -hmm. another show. That's crazy. I mean, me and him got drafted to SmackDown, didn't get a chance to debut. B Fab only made one appearance. Carry across. Uh, I think yeah, he wrestled yeah, literally. Monday. He either wrestled Monday or last Monday, so it wasn't like carrying across. Because you know they was trying to give him that old school what you call it gimmick. Uh, remember when Sean O'Hare was trying to do the gimmick of like that devil's advocate type of gimmick? Oh yeah, they was kind of giving Carry across that gimmick a little bit with his promos. Um. Then we're talking about Nia Jax, who's injured, so she wasn't there to kind of. Yeah. And then you're talking about all these NXT people, because like I said, the Robert Stone brand is officially done. It's just Robert Stone now. Yeah. You know, I guess Cora Jade now is going to be up and missing the boyfriend. <laughs> it row is about to look interesting because now it's like, oh yeah. Remember how we had that woman in the group? Yeah. She's gone. She went somewhere. We don't know where she went. <laughs> like, you know? And and see, this this is this is like the prime example of Triple H creates Vince destroys because yeah. Hit Row Hit Row as an overall package was perfectly fine. Yes. Now you take out B-Fab, and it's like now you're missing the female representation of that group. So basically mm -hmm. what you did was you just sanityed Hit Row. Yep. 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 And then, and sanity, and then you had Ember, who was trying to work her way back, seeing like she maybe was doing some type of new kind of gimmick because she was like she's getting tired of losing. Something has to change. Mm -hmm. And now... Athena's about to kill it in AEW. Because most likely she's going to go back to Athena. I saw somebody's tweet. Uh, Revolution might be a very interesting pay-per-view. Mm. Because if we assume let's, let's assume Cross, Scarlet, and maybe Taya goes back to Impact. Mm -hmm. Cause that's where they were at before they went to do they that still leaves Keith, Mia Ember Harry that leaves a nice little amount of people Revolution could look very interesting come February I mean Mia could go back to Impact too yeah Mia can go back to Impact too but I do see her going with Keith though yes so I can, yeah, I would. Oh man. Oh, Keith going to fucking AEW. I don't know. It, it really depends on how the landscape looks at that time because it does. I okay. don't know. I don't know what you would fucking do because that's. Whew. Oh. Mm. I think Mia may end up going somewhere, and I think Keith may take some time and then he'll pop up when you least expect it. I don't think he's going to pop up when it, when his 90 days are up. I think he may hit the indie scene. Yeah. He might, he might hit the indies or new Japan and like do, do a nice little tour and okay. then pop up in AEW. But I think he's going to end up going there because I, I think, I think it makes the most sense. I actually but, just said, apparently they're supposed to get married in like two months. Oh yeah. Okay. Keep, oh, uh, Mia. 
That's perfect. So get they married. Their, they take their contract money. Go get married. Yeah. Get mm-hmm. the, get their get their severance. You know, go ahead and uh get married, have a nice little honeymoon, go on a va- vacation. You know, do all this other stuff, and then once they're nice and uh rest rested and refreshed, and Mia is sexed. <laughs> I mean, that's what you do on a honeymoon, man. That's right, but I, you you have to say it separately though, because um, Keith Lee is going to bear cat them cheeks. So, <laughs> just saying, and that would be the last time he used that nickname, right? Oh, and shit. then that's when Mia is going to come back with a vengeance and be ready for some retribution against WWE. Yeah, so, hit her with the name just to let them know that she's the true HBIC, which that's what we might get between her and fucking Jay Cargill. That'd be interesting. That bitch versus the head bitch in charge. Yep. Yeah. But book it. Revolution could be interesting. Yeah. It um, could be interesting. What here's the thing about it too, because Bray Wyatt or Wyndham Rotunda is going to have, and it's and it's been said consistently throughout the IWC, he's gonna have the most anticipated interview. Yes. This is yeah. gonna start yeah. a domino effect of all these people because again, people are gonna want to talk to Cross um about that fucking super shredder uh dominatrix demolition gimmick. Mm. People are gonna want to talk to Keith Lee about I mean, I, would, I call it a Mad Max thing, but yeah. More that. Yeah, look, in, insert cliche name right there for Karrion Cross. Um, yeah, everybody's gonna have have something to say at that point, but yeah, I don't. I'm just. I again, I don't even know how to feel at this point. I don't know if I'm baffled. I don't know if I'm just like numb to it because. I mean, it's, so it's, the problem is it's it's a little bit of both. It's some baffling, and of course, it's being numb to it because we've seen. Don't forget, we got the same reactions when uh, Alistair Black, Braun Strowman, and all of those got released. It was like, wait, what? Yeah. The, the, the issue is, is that it it like Sit. if we seen or if we can see a plan. It makes sense because once again, what was the purpose of y'all doing all that damn talent hoarding? Yeah. Now, another joke that came out of this is not a joke that the people got released. Let me say that. Yeah. The joke is 2K is piss. Oh shit, that's right. <laughs> 2K is piss. So my brother was like, <laughs> my brother was like, 2K don't know what to do. I said, look, they gonna just release the game with 25 wrestlers, <laughs> and as time progress, they gonna just upload people in the game. But you know, this is about to be Street Fighter people. Five. Yes, it's gonna be Street. Yes, 2K22 is gonna be Street Fighter Five. We're gonna get by 25 wrestlers. Look, we're gonna get Roman. We're gonna get the New Day. We're going to get Charlotte. We're going to get Becky. We're going to get Bianca. We're going to get Sasha. We're going to get Bailey, Randy Orton, Edge, and Seth Rollins. That's the only people who I feel that might be safe. <laughs> you know what, they though? As time progress, they might just slowly put them in the game. You know what, though? Remember how we always complained about WWE not utilizing talent that that they have in the in the lot in the back, just chilling, yes. even catering. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and say it. Go ahead yeah, and I say mean, it. I mean, in a way, they're they're addressing this problem. <laughs> That's true, but my thing is this: here, 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 here's the thing. They're releasing all this talent. I swear. If we still continue to see rematch after rematch 
after I mean, rematch. What else came I mean, in? Great, 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 yeah. Granted, I know because they released a lot of people. They may not have anybody <laughs> left, but they got they got plenty. There, there's oh. no reason not to push new people. That I don't know. That was the other joke I saw somebody put under a comment. They were like, well, prepare to see Reigns and Lesnar. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get how you, like, how can you, like, legitimately with a straight face defend anything this company does at this point? Because you don't even know, unless, unless you're Roman, you don't know if your job is secure. Right? At this point, Roman seems like the only one. I mean, because because Roman's is, looking around man, like, damn, that's wild. Because what's sad to me, and unfortunately, this goes to Triple H. Triple H has to really just be like, I'm going to fight this old man. Like, because the thing is, I mean, like, think about, like, just think for a second. He gift wrapped you, carrying Cross and Keith Lee. Yeah. Give wrapped. Yeah. Greedy bow and everything. Even tied it all up. Look what y'all did. He gave you a surprise gift and hit row. Yeah. He gave you a surprise gift with hit row. And then it was like, uh, cut the female element out. Sir, what is happening? And the thing is, don't get me wrong, I know in other jobs and other companies, things like this happen. But if I'm out there busting my ass and killing it, don't call me a budget cut. Yeah. At least have the balls to tell us why you're really doing it. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, because you damn sure can't say that shit about Bray Wyatt, because I'm pretty sure... He was making back what he was worth with merchandise that sales. Campaign, yeah, that that campaign right. against him is still going strong. And and that and that and that reason keeps changing because it, the other people saying not budget cuts because now he was difficult to work with and mm -hmm. his weight issues and all this other shit. It's like pretty convenient on. how that budget cut sh or like the difficult to work with shit comes out like right before he's about to right before right before his contract is expiring. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or is ninety days? I should say. The I'm nerd. pretty sure. I'm pretty sure with this happening, Johnny, Kevin, and uh, uh, O'Reilly, they're gone. Don't even, don't even, don't even think to react them to sign. For real, Gargano, Owens and O'Reilly are gone. Uh, yo, gone. yeah, I would. I would get out before I got cut. They're gone. So I definitely know O'Reilly ain't resigning. No, not for this because I mean he he should already know. Once his job is done with Von Wagner, get rid of him too. I'm pretty sure Pete Dunn is probably punching the air right now. Like, God damn it! <laughs> right. New New Japan was calling his name. Yep. I'm just yep. saying. I just make sure nothing new has happened since we've been talking. But yeah. <laughs> Ten more. Fuck. Yeah. Right. Because uh, it's. But, I mean, uh, shit. It's it's happened before. But I'm pretty yeah. sure if we're gonna see something else. It'll probably be tomorrow. Yeah, I I actually do look forward to see. Well, I don't look forward to seeing any more releases, but I look forward. To seeing the the media campaign on this from WWE on as to what's going on and shit like that because they gotta be fixing the cell, man. That's that's the only conclusion that I can draw. That and like you proposed earlier that they're just trying to like give big bank to the people that they know they want to keep mm -hmm. to make sure that they don't go anywhere. Not to be ha ha funny, but go ahead and uh, be ha. Not to be ha ha funny, but somebody did post on there. Karrion Cross ain't been the same since that Adam Cole promo. <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> I 
Oh, so here you go, uh, Jaeger. Scarlet's tweets, officially free to work in 30 days. And yes, the smoke show is back. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I mean, uh, I mean uh, yeah, yeah. Woo. I ain't going to lie, though, Scoot. When you, when you told me, hold up, I was like, ah, oh, shit, here goes Shotzi. Now, the only reason why I'm not going to say Shotzi now, because they put her in a very... It she had a match against uh Charlotte uh mm-hmm. Friday, and it seemed like the original plan for Shotzi was to make her turn heel and kind of align herself with Sasha. Yeah, the way they did this whole turn, but apparently, or turn I guess they're is staying weird. away from it in a sense, too. So, I don't <laughs> know. So, I don't know if they're gonna align uh Shotzi and Sasha, but that was the original plan was to turn Shotzi heel. And align herself a little bit with uh, uh, Banks. Uh, uh, uh. Still a weird combination, but you know. Tegan might be the one in trouble. Sorry, Dizzle. Tegan might be the one in trouble, but I think Shotzi might be okay for a little bit. Maybe. Hopefully. I mean, I don't know if if trouble's the right word. They might be liberating. I don't know. Hell, knock on wood, I wouldn't be surprised. I see fucking Xavier Woods on the goddamn list at this point. I don't know anymore. Nah, new 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 day in the, are in the same category as as Reigns. They, they are, but I'm just saying the way this shit is going, I don't fucking know anymore. Because Big E just just really went on a whole uh, yeah, media Big media e tour, a damn media tour. So, so, but yeah, at this point, I don't know. I really don't know who is on the chopping block. To be honest with you, fuck okay. it. No, but not fuck it. Because that's what WWE is saying right now. I know that's yeah. what they're saying. Um, I, you know what? I will, I will say this because we're gonna, we're gonna get it on both sides. You're gonna get a whole lot of WWE stands defending all of this, okay. and you're gonna get a, a bunch of AEW stands saying, "Ha ha, you see, your company's trash." This is some middle of the road shit because one, nobody should should have to lose their job, and no company should ever be this fucking free-handed with releases. I almost want to say malicious, but sure. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah fair enough. That's kind of what we talked about with the last wave of releases. It's almost like there's a list. Hey, these names you cannot touch. Mm-hmm. Everybody else? You know, and it's it's getting weird because I don't know. I kind of agree with Jaeger. It's kind of something malicious because it's getting weird because imagine you doing everything the company wants you to do. Mm-hmm. Hey, we want you to reinvent yourself. All right. What you want me to do? Hey, we want you to talk like this instead of talk like that. We want you to change your music. We want you to change your look. We want you to lose a little weight. We want you to gain a little weight. I want you to cut your hair. I want you to manage fucking heavyweights. Like, it's like you, it's like how to, like, just, like, honestly, just imagine right now. I know it's going to sound weird to hear this and say this, but like, just imagine we hear tomorrow AEW release MJF or AEW release Darby Allen or Jungle Boy or. Sammy Guevara, the four, one of the four pillars is getting released, and you're going to be like, did they do something? Like, the immediate thought was what they do. Exactly. And then they're just like, nah, there was a budget cut. Wait, you budget cut one of your pillars? Or like, or like just imagine tomorrow a hey, Hangman Page getting released out of his contract, but for the championship? Right. Yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> like, Granted, yes, when you hear the names on the list, no, they weren't names that were prominently featured on TV, and no, they weren't names that weren't like on the level of the untouchable list, but the potential was there for like half these super like we didn't really get a chance to see Taya do much. Taya yeah, had that- what 10 matches, if that? Yeah, big if. Yeah. So, I don't know. I'm kind of starting to side with Jaeger with the whole malicious thing. Dude, that's what it is. I'm, not, I'm just calling the spade the spade here. I mean, because, like, once again, let's really 
let's really kind of put it in a weird perspective. Mm -hmm. Kind of what I said to y'all earlier. If your dream was to be a part of the WWE, that was a lifelong dream or a dream when you started wrestling, the dream was to make it to the WWE. Either you get there through main roster or you get there through NXT, you're still in the WWE system. You do everything right by the system. Then all of a sudden, you know what? Uh, yeah. But hey, yeah. champ, uh, you know, things aren't looking too hot for us here. We're a little suffering financially. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to just go ahead and budget cut you. Yeah. Fam, you um, know what I could have been doing right now? Like, <laughs> that, and that, that's one of the main issues because, again, just like just to your point, Scoot and Jaeger, it's the whole thing of yeah. You ask the question: Is this the place to be? And for fans, fans, you know, you can look at WrestleMania as a spectacle. It's like yeah, it's something to do, cross off a bucket list, whatever. But mm -hmm. for the superstars or the potential professional wrestlers that want to go there, it's hard to look at WWE and say, you know what? That's the be all end all. I know I need to go there because you look at all these releases and you and then you start to wonder. Will I honestly be valued, or will I become, mm -hmm. like CM Punk stated, another cog on the wheel? Speaking that of I can just CM be Punk, replaced. I'm glad you brought that name up because mm. it, it kind of goes along with the whole topic of this video. Okay. His quote If I went back to WWE, what would I do? There's a formula. I was bored of that shit 10 years ago. Now, to that point as well. Hmm. Now, to and, and this is only to slightly defend WWE. This could be a way for them to clean house and maybe looking at the writing on the wall and saying, you know what? We got to do something different. Here we go. And if that's the case, it sucks, but I'm all for change for the better, especially if you're doing something that's going to help the company out and the fans that religiously watch your shit and lobby for you. If it's going to help in the long run, I'm fine with that. Do I like the process? No. But if the end result means a better company for all encompassing both the company and fans and professional wrestlers included, then fine. We'll see. Go, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm you no, go no, ahead. no. Well, the only thing I was going to say out there is that, but if this is a case of where it's like you're going to do this and then go back to the same thing that you were doing, like the previous releases, then. Yeah, I might have to side with Jaeger and say this could be just the, the beginning of the end. They may be potentially selling this company. Well, see, this is the asterisk, I feel, to kind of what you just said. Mm. Uh, Jaeger, I'm yeah. going to direct this towards you. By all means. How, how would you feel <laughs> if AEW, Dynamite, Rampage, let's take either Elevation or Dark, between four shows, you saw the same match three or four or five times. If it was early AEW, I would have said, well, the roster ain't huge. If it's now we're talking about. Yeah, right now, AEW, let's say we got Jamie Hayter and Anna J three weeks Next in week. a row. Oh. Okay, let me not do that because I saw Dizzle's face. Let's say we got Sorry. Cody Rhodes and Andrade or Cody Rhodes and Malachi Black for like two months straight of the same fight. Yeah, I'm already sick of that. Now you've already gone three times already. So, yeah. Yeah. That's WWE. That and is. The same people fighting each other every week. Then it's like the pay-per-view is supposed to be the blow off. Then four or five months later, They'll just have a random match against each other. Then they'll reference the shit like we didn't just see the shit. Oh, Randy Orton and uh, Drew McIntyre. Yes. <laughs> like, like, I'm pretty sure it's killing them right now that technically they can't do Edge and uh, Randy Orton right now. I mean, oh. Edge and uh, or Rollins. Rollins. I mean, even though Rollins is about to feud with Big E. But, yeah. you know, ugh. <laughs> it's sloppy, man. It's very. And that also shows that you don't have faith in your employees other than the top brass of your roster because 
Mm-hmm. Again, that's that shows the the value that you see within your rest is basically as if they're just interchangeable. It's like, oh yeah, we're paying them this much. I'll right, get rid of them. Oh, the, yeah. okay, get rid of them. It's fine. We don't need them. Mm-hmm. How 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 do you go about saying something like that? Especially when you just got hit row for whatever reason you want to bring them on SmackDown and you cut a fourth of them out. Like, what value did you see before? Did you just see, okay, you know what? We see Top Dollar. He's a big guy. We want to take him. We'll slowly dissect the rest of them away. Is that what's going to happen? Probably. Like, I really wish I knew the plan here because then I could stop it. I wish we all knew the plan so we could stop it. Yeah, I... I'm I'm I am thoroughly confused. Uh and I can't I can't wait for this Wyndham interview wherever he's gonna pop up. I hope it's sooner than later because I honestly I don't want to wait another week or two. I want this shit to like drop ASAP. Mm-hmm. So I can see like his I already know I'm about to get some juicy bits. And I and, and John Moxley was like the last one that, that I listened to, and I was just like, damn, he really went in because that was a two parter. So, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> well, I guess since we're here, uh, gentlemen, any final thoughts with this? Um, what the fuck? Yeah. No, what the actual fuck? Yeah, or what the actual fuck? My final thoughts is... WWE is gonna WWE. Damn now, even now, WWE even now, WWE is gonna WWE. He said it twice. Yeah, doesn't make it any nicer though. <laughs> yeah. yeah, what the fuck, WWE? Just gonna keep WWE. In. So, yeah. Please don't release anybody else tomorrow or don't let us hear about it within the next couple of days. Let this be it for right now because this is it's getting wait, ridiculous. Hold on, hold on. Nah, don't hold you on. do that, Scoot. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, looks like uh, Kenny Omega has entered the chat. Hold on. Oh. Well, I, I know we was about to sign off. Hold on. Apparently, Kenny Omega tweeted. Old rivals, old friends, some I've never encountered. I don't mind patting my record if they don't mind being a statistic. See if I care. Throwing down the gauntlet. Damn. All right, Kenny. All WWE releases to AEW confirm. Shout out to Ollie (laughs) Davis. But, (laughs) yeah. All right. Until unless something else happens for tonight, I think we're. I hope. I hope we're good. I hope the Stanford offices are closed. But yeah. Go home. I think. But yeah. Hot tag that shit. Tag out. Good shit. Yeah. No more.